You want me to be in character? If you want to. Whatever you want, Frankie. All right. Yeah, you can be in character. That that that'd be all right. <laughs> okay. I think that's the voice your listeners will recognize. You know. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Hey, everybody. Right. Welcome to the another great edition of the Frankie Slauson Show, and uh, uh, today we got a huge, huge guest. Uh, one of the most popular and iconic uh, men to uh, grace uh, uh, America, but also a guy who came from Canada. Mr. Red Green. How's it going, sir? Well, if it was going any better, I'd be twins, Frankie. <laughs> well, hey, I, I appreciate the fact that uh, you uh, were nice enough to grace us with your presence uh, to do uh, a, an interview, uh, because you are coming to Rapid City here on Thursday. Yeah, it's coming up real soon. I, mean, I started this tour a few weeks ago in St. Petersburg, Florida, and we're halfway through it right now, and... Uh, we end up in Anchorage on uh, May the 15th, and then I'm done. Yeah, uh, which I think is so neat, the fact that uh, that you uh, decided to, to come to, well, to even start a tour after uh, being retired since, what, 2006, since your show uh, ended? Yeah, you know, I, I, I thought I could retire, and, and what happened was that uh, I just started saying things I was thinking just to my friends, and uh, they found that was getting a bit annoying. So they needed a lot of people to help share the load. So they suggested I go on the road and, and share some of these thoughts with with, with other people and, and give them a bit of a break. So that's what I did. Okay. Uh, no, I I just think it's just so neat because uh, you know what when, when you say when when you share the name Red Green with people, everybody just about everybody knows who that is. And if they don't know, it's like they've been living under a rock for the last twenty years. <laughs> Well, so I think especially true in the Midwest. You know, I think Midwestern Americans are kind of like Canadians, only more so. So I think we we have an instant uh, connection. Uh, I'm originally from northern Minnesota. Originally, uh, that's where I, I grew up, and I moved here to Rapid City here last summer. Uh, you just got done doing a, a, a show in Bemidji, and uh, I'm sure they treated you like a, a god over there, huh? Oh my gosh, that was, I mean, they've all been good, but Bemidji is kind of special. There one fellow showed up and he, he had a, made his own possum van. I mean, he, he'd driven it from North Dakota over to, to Bemidji. I mean, wow. You know, I mean, wow. Yeah, I mean, that has to be kind of, uh, cause I know you, uh, the show used to air on PBS as well as CBC, and that's how I kind of got, uh, introduced to the whole show concept. And now I, now I see you're, you're on YouTube. Yeah, we've got all the episodes, all 300 episodes are on YouTube, and, and we have a library there where you can go, if you're looking for something in particular, you can look it up and see which show it's on, and then just, and then just watch that show. No, I, I think YouTube is a great thing because it, it gives us direct access, you know, to, to the people who want to see it, and you don't have to go through a, a middleman like a television station or, or what have you. I, I think it's great. Yeah, and, and it kind of saves a little bit of uh, money for. So I, I noticed that all your the seasons are also available on DVD, and and you know there there's a there's a low hefty price for most of the seasons, but uh, I think it's just kind of neat that you uh, were nice enough to let them uh, go on YouTube uh, so people could actually check you out, and maybe you still want to buy the box sets. Well, don't forget, Frankie, you know, we never thought anybody would enjoy this show, so this is still a miracle to us. And if we get anybody that enjoys it even a little, we want them to be able to see it. <laughs> well, well, that's that's kind of neat because uh, yeah, you can, you, you, for those of you who are, are uh, new to Red Green or, or have never heard of him, uh, you should go check out his, his YouTube page because uh, uh, the show definitely evolved from the very beginnings to where you probably were, I, I remember, I think uh, in your press release they were saying something like you were you wanted to do the show as like a summer job at first, and then uh, you never thought it would ever be as big as it ever became. Oh, absolutely. You know, it was supposed to be a summer job in about 1990, and then the way it went, and then PBS picked it up. I would say, like, PBS is educational television, and the Red Green Show is recess. So that that's the way we fit in. <laughs> And you added some great characters throughout the years, and, and uh, uh, do you still uh, hang out with Harold here and there, or what's he been up to? Uh, you know, I, I I just heard from Harold last week. I mean, you know, I'm on the road, he's on the road, and uh, you know, we don't our paths don't cross a lot, but through email, we kind of keep in touch. And uh, I have a book out called The Beginner's Guide to Women. It's just been nominated for an award in Canada, and he was emailing me to say that he saw that in the paper. So, 
he, everybody's doing fine. I mean, we sadly we lost one character who passed away a couple of years ago, but uh, otherwise uh, I just keep in touch uh, through email, and once in a while I bump into them. But uh, you know, we kind of it was something that we all really enjoyed doing, and we did it for 15 years together, and then uh, and then got on with our lives. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, as most uh, as most of uh, 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 the people know know you as Red Green, but you're also you, your name is uh, Steve Smith, and, and you started your career uh, really early. Uh, I think what was it with the, the Smith and Smith show, or or am I wrong on that? No, you're you're. I'm switching over to Odd Steve Smith now, but since you're going to mention him, <laughs> sure. Yeah, uh, you know, I started out actually in in music. I was in a band, and my wife was also in the band, and and. Uh, and we, we kind of did that for a while, and then we started just the two of us performing, and that led to a pilot for a show called Smith & Smith, which was kind of like a Canadian Sonny and Cher, if anybody's old enough to remember that. And we did that for eight or nine years, and then uh, the Red Green character was actually created inside that show as a little skit. And uh, and then when, when I was going to just carry on, my wife was retiring from TV to look after our kids and so on, that's when I decided to just see if I could expand Red Green into a half hour and, and like I say, do one season and then uh, get on with something else that would actually make sense. But, uh, you know, the things intervene. I mean, the show the show just, I'm not saying it's a big hit, but it caught on with enough people that uh, it could survive. And, and also I think that, that most people thought that it would never work. So there, sometimes when they're shocked about any success, they, they, they kind of see, want to see how far it goes. And no, uh, and that, uh, that's kind of kind of neat because, uh, like I say, you you know, it's almost like you're taking a gamble in a way because uh, uh, most people, you know, that that's kind of how shows kind of do. You know, sometimes they run too long, and then you think that does anybody is anybody even interested in what we got to do? But it seems like for the whole time that uh, Red Green was on, uh, that everybody uh, everybody enjoyed it from the start to the end. Yeah, and you know, uh, I, I actually, two years before the show ended, I asked the uh, broadcast, well, CBC was our broadcaster in Canada, and I said to them, I would like to do two more seasons and then that's it. And they, uh, they said, that's great. They gave me a two year renewal, which was very unusual. And, and what it allowed me to do is to give everybody two years notice. It also allowed me to control, you know, how the show would end. I did not want to go that extra year that most shows go. They do it for the money and the show usually sucks and then everybody has that memory and then they enjoyed the show for five years and then that sixth year was so awful that uh, that's all they remember i didn't want that experience i wanted it to end it while we were still doing our, our best work and uh did you uh did you help write a lot of the material oh I, oh yeah i'm primarily a writer I, I was a head writer on the show um i'm doing these one man shows now i've been doing for a few years and i, I mean, i'm just i'm the only writer on those so yeah i i I have a, I have a way of looking at the world that's a little bit odd. It's been a delight for me to find out other people uh, kind of share that sense of humor. But it, it, that's that's the driving force. That's why I couldn't stay retired because I was I just kept generating new stuff anyway. So I might as well get out there and use it. Oh sure. Well, we have a couple uh, questions. I, I posted this on my Facebook page last night because I wanted to get some of my viewers uh, uh, involved in the conversation here today. Uh, a couple questions. Uh, one is from a guy named Ian Thorpe, and uh, he asked, uh, all, all, the pro- or all, the, all the projects you did on the show, especially during Henny Man Quarter, what was your most yeah. favorite? You know, I, it's, it's like ask me which kid do I like better, you know? It's it's a tough one. I, I There's some great memories there. I mean, we did some stuff on the water that was unbelievable, and uh, I remember making a backhoe out of a Cadillac. Uh, in, in the final show, um, I did a perpetual motion machine, which it, it was very appealing to me because it kind of, that would be the ultimate red green project. In fact, when I do the one-man shows, before, uh, like 15 minutes before the show starts, they run a little compressed version of the last episode, and that, that segment is in it. But, you know, it, when we did those handyman corners, we were like a bunch of eight year old kids just goofing around in the backyard, uh, but we had a little bit of money to do something, and we had guys who kind of knew how to weld and, and make cars go and stuff. So it was, it was really like fantasy for me. I, I mean, there's very few of them that I, that I didn't enjoy, and and this will shock the guy too. Most of those things worked, and they worked a little bit for a little while, but they did work. Oh yeah, 
it, it seemed like that too because uh, uh, I kind of felt bad for the possum van. You know, it seemed like uh, it, it definitely got beat up and uh, or really not really beat up, but just uh, it really got used a lot uh, through the segments. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, actually, there were five possum vans, so they got to they got to share the, the abuse. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's pretty cool. Uh, and then uh, one, one last question for for the for the fans, anyway. Uh, pretty much, this is from uh, my uncle Terry, who who uh, tunes into my show. Uh, he pretty much just asks, "Are you ever going to stop being red green?" And please say no. <laughs> no, I. You know what? I can't because it, red green is not an add on for me. You know, red green is inside me. I mean, there's, there, obviously there are parts of me that's not red green, but. Uh, all of Red Green is in there somewhere. I created the characters; and it wasn't stuck on me. And uh, and he's he's my best friend because uh, he gives me uh, a way of saying and doing things that I, I otherwise would never get a chance to say and do. Yeah, uh, one of the questions that I had uh, is kind of uh, uh, about some of the sayings that Red Green says, like "Keep your stick on the ice" or or. Uh, uh, if the women don't find you handy, at least they'll find you handsome. Or no, if they yeah, don't the, find you the handsome, other way around. <laughs> yeah. If, if the women don't find you handsome, then at least they find you handy. Yeah, that's. Yeah. I, I screwed that up. I'm sorry. I apologize. That's, <laughs> that's all right. I'm a little. I'm, I, I'll, I'll admit, you know, I'm a little starstruck because you know, even though I, I ha- didn't get a chance to do a face to face with you on Thursday, but uh, I'm, I'm still kind of excited of the fact that I get to chat with you. This is this is uh, bigger than you think. I mean, uh, you're the iconic character of Red Green coming to. Rapid City. Uh, they've been advertising it here for quite a while, ever since you were, were booked. And uh, uh, has uh, ha- have you been pretty? Have you been treated pretty well everywhere you've gone, uh, even in places that probably aren't familiar with, with your work? Well, you know, I, I don't go to places that aren't familiar with my work because we won't sell any tickets. You know, <laughs> uh, the, probably one of. I mean, there's a couple of reasons why I really enjoy the live performing. I, I, to be honest with you, I enjoy it more than the television. First of all, it's it's just way more personal. It's just I'm I'm not talking to Harold. I'm talking to you. You know, I'm I'm talking to you in the audience there. And secondly, uh, because of the nature of a live performance, where you got to buy it, you got to make an effort. You got to spend some money to buy a ticket, and then you got to get a, get off the lazy boy and get into the car and drive over to the place. I'm eliminating all the people that are ambivalent about me. You know, if you don't if you don't care about Red Green, you're not going to buy a ticket. You're not going to go. So so the people that are there really want to be there, and it's just such a great atmosphere for me to work in. You know, it's just, and, and every one, we, I've done 16 shows, i got seven, 17th tonight, but but every one of them has been like that. It's just like a bunch of friends getting together. You can't beat that. And how how did the idea start that you, uh, that you wanted to, like, other than just uh, because you were retired, but, like, how did you get the idea to say, hey, you know, I'm, I'm going to do a one-man show? Well, I, what happened was, um, the president of, of a publisher, publishing company in Canada, Random House, is called. It's actually an international company. Anyway, he said to me that if I wanted to write a book in the red green character, they would publish anything I wanted to write. So I, I thought, well, that's pretty neat. And if I say no, he'll never ask me again. So I wrote a book. It was called How to Do Everything. And then, when you write a book, you have to go and promote it. Well, I didn't. I'm not a, a big fan of book tours. You go to you go to some store somewhere and you sell six books. Like I would rather, I say to them, I'll pay, I'll buy seven books not to go. <laughs> so I said, rather than do a book tour, why don't I see if I can do a one man show thing? And so that it was really the the book was a start, and the one man show was to help promote the book. And the other factor I really should mention, I'm not very good at going back and doing something that I've done before. So I always like to move forward. I never did theater or stand up or anything as a young man like this is not me going back and doing something that i was doing when i was 23 i've never done this before and, and so that makes it feel fresh and new and, and interesting for me oh that, that's ex- uh, that's exciting and i think uh, for for those of you who haven't uh, for for those of you who live in rapid city here i think uh, uh that no regret and i think it should be an exciting show and i I think Marlene's gonna hook hook uh, hook the station up with a couple of tickets, so I, I definitely wanna 
I want to go. And uh, I, I think uh, I think it'll be nice uh, just the fact uh, that you can say this. You know, if, if if you know after like maybe a few years from now down the road, you, you, when you're really ready to retire, uh, you, you know, just be kind of a feather in the cap. It's like uh, almost like one last hurrah. Even though you still got many years left, you can always do this again. <laughs> But it's like a feather in a cap for you. It's like uh, it's like the rebirth of Red Green uh, live and in person. Yeah, I agree with you. And, and to be honest with you, Frankie, I, this, this has been the most enjoyable part of my career. I've never had as much fun. I, I don't need to be doing this. I'm doing it because I want to do it. And uh, if the people come to the show, I think they'll enjoy themselves. But they'll certainly they won't be, they won't see a guy up there who who you know resents what he's doing or is just uh, kind of going through the motion. I, I'm. I'm the happiest guy in the room. Oh well, that's well, that's awesome. Uh, you know, you seem like well, you're, you're you're the man of the people, and and uh, I I think that's uh, that's kind of great. We should have Red Green or Steve Smith as uh, president of the U.S. I think maybe things would get back. <laughs> things would things would be a lot more interesting. <laughs> okay. Well, there, there's a job I definitely would turn down. <laughs> <laughs> but but a uh, couple more questions for you before I let you go, and uh, basically one, one as uh, as you yourself, Steve Smith, and the other as uh, Red Green. Uh, as Steve Smith, uh, right. as Steve Smith. Uh, what do you got to say to your fans as a as a way of just saying thank you? Well, I mean, my fans, my fan base, everything is a miracle. People don't re- people don't know this, but after the second season of Red Green, it was the show was canceled. Uh, the station had some had some financial problems; they just couldn't keep it going. And I mean, I've been working television a long time. Shows get canceled; that's just normal. Well, what happened was the fans started writing letters. I was getting a thousand letters a day saying things like, do whatever you gotta do, you gotta keep this show on the air. And so at that point, I changed and, and this show became not a show that I was doing, it was, it was a show that the fans were doing through me. So that's really, that's how important the fans are. If there were no fans for the Red Green Show, I guarantee you, they, that show would never have survived its second season. It would never have gone 15 seasons. So, I, I don't know how you can get more important than that. And as Red Green, uh, any any final words to the audience? Well, I, you know, I would say that apathy is is your best friend. And when people don't care about what you're doing, you're allowed to do anything. So don't get all upset if people don't pay attention to you. Sometimes a little attention is a real bad thing. And other than that, enjoy life, and most of all, keep your stick on the ice. Hey, well, I appreciate uh, this interview, Red and and, uh, and Steve, and, and I really, really uh, want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart. You know, this 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 is uh, a feather in my cap, but to me, it's uh, it's a big it's a big deal to to talk to somebody like you. Well, thanks, Frankie, and all all the best to you in, in the future. All right, we'll talk to you later. Bye bye. Bye now. And that was the legendary and iconic uh, Steve Smith, aka Mister Red Green. And I hope you guys enjoyed uh, that interview. I mean, this was like, uh, <laughs> I mean, this is this is big time, you know, as far as I'm concerned. Another another feather in the cap, or as, as big as talking to, uh, uh, as big as talking to me and Gene Oakland and John Barry and, and a few of those that have been uh, very iconic uh, people that a lot of people know. Well, this is Red Green, Red freaking Green, and he's coming to see, or he's coming to Rapid City. South Dakota at the Rushmore Plaza Civic Center this week, uh, this coming uh, Thursday night. So hopefully you guys uh, tune in. And this interview will probably air on uh, my Wednesday show, and then uh, we're going to air it on uh, Friday night as well, just to give you guys kind of a repeat of it. But I do appreciate it, and uh, thanks to Marlene for setting this up, and thanks to the Civic Center for hooking, hooking me up, and I uh, appreciate it. We'll be right back with some more Frankie Slauson. Uh, Frankie Slauson Show with, with me, with Frankie, and the old Reb. We'll be right back.